welcome. Uh, so, we are looking into Krylov subspace based method and we have looked into uh, number of methods involving uh, Arnoldi's method, full orthogonal method, generalized minimum residual method. And then we looked into Krylov subspace methods which is same as Arnoldi's or full orthogonalization method, but specifically for symmetric matrices and we saw that there are a uh, number of interesting things happen for symmetric matrices especially we get a, uh, a conjugacy of the auxiliary vector and the auxiliary vector comes due to uh, the fact that the H matrix becomes a triangular matrix for symmetric matrix and from there we have looked into Langsos algorithm which has been modified as direct Langsos and further into conjugate gradient method which is a very efficient and uh, uh, very simple method for solving symmetric matrix problems. Now, uh, the goal of the present lecture will be and, and of, of course, this will be continued in subsequent lectures that whether uh, conjugate gradient type simple and efficient solver can be designed for general any general matrix not only for the symmetric matrices. Earlier we have seen that most of the matrix solvers have certain limitations in a sense that Jacobi, Gauss Seidel or SOR are applicable only for diagonally dominant or irreducibly diagonally dominant systems and um, conjugate gradient steepest descent applic are applicable for symmetric matrices. If we look into symmetric positive definite matrices especially steepest descent, if we look into GMRDS that is probably the only method which I have looked uh, into right now is applicable for more wider classes of matrix. Even the matrix is asymmetric, GMRDS can be applied. Even it, it is not uh, strictly diagonally dominant, GMRDS can be applied. Uh, however, so our present target will be looking into general purpose matrices. The matrix may not be diagonally dominant, may not be uh, symmetric but the matrix has to be uh, non-singular for, uh, for having a solution. So, for any non-singular matrix can we develop a method and we will explore trial of space subspace methods more to look into that part. Uh, so, what we will uh, uh, look in this particular uh, class is Langsos by orthogonalization which is a variant of trial of subspace method and then uh, how a conjugate gradient type of methods can be developed for general matrices for non symmetric matrices using Langsos by orthogonalization. We uh, have earlier done with Krylov subspace methods and the projection method for solving A x is equal to B using Krylov subspace method is a method that seeks an approximate solution x m from an affine subspace x 0 plus k n by imposing the condition that the residual B minus A x m is orthogonal to L m. L m is another subspace of dimension m, x 0 is initial guess, k m is also a subspace of dimension n. In case of Krylov subspace method, k m is the Krylov subspace of A and R 0, A is the matrix and R 0 is the initial residual B minus A x 0 in R n and k m the Krylov subspace is defined as span of R 0, A R 0, A square R 0. 2 a to the power m minus 1 r 0 that is a m dimensional space in R n. The different versions of Krylov subspace methods arise from different choice of L m and uh, the way the system is preconditioned. Preconditioning will uh, look, in, look later, we, we have earlier discussed that this will come later. There are two broad, two broad choices for L m which we have seen till now in the earlier examples of Krylov subspace methods. One is L m is equal to k m which is full orthogonal or method or F m another is L m is equal to A k m which is GMRES or minimum residual method. This is a complete orthogonal projection and the second one is an oblique projection. Now, if we look into orthogonal project projection in detail then we will see that for symmetric matrix uh, we can get Langsos orthogonalization and can get conjugate met method, gradient method from full orthogonal method. Langsos method will find the approximate solution as x m is equal to x 0 plus v m y m where v m is the basis of Krylov subspace and y m can be obtained by inverting the tridiagonal matrix T m which comes from Langsos orthogonalization 
of uh, the uh, the Heisenberg matrix upper part of the Heisenberg matrix basically assumes a tri diagonal form we have looked into that. So, y m is equal to T m inverse beta e 1 and we have seen that inversion of a tri diagonal matrix is simple and as well as T d m a type of algorithms can be used for direct inversion there can be there are recursive relations which come and this makes the problem simpler. Conjugate gradient method is a faster method in terms of number of iterations or convergence rate. It is the convergence rate is a function, function of um, um, root over of condition number. So, the convergence is faster and also the number of operations in each iteration step is smaller because we can use something like a recursive relation for tri diagonal matrices here. A conjugacy of auxiliary vector p, p i transpose a p j is equal to 0 is used. We will we'll quickly see what is an auxiliary vector. So, tri diagonal matrix T m can be uh, decomposed as a lower and upper triangular matrix and the V m U m inverse this becomes an orthogonal uh, this becomes the auxiliary matrix uh, aux auxiliary vector matrix P m and all the columns of P are mutually A conjugate to each other that is P i transpose A p j is equal to 0 if i is not is equal to j. So, we can get P m transpose A p m is equal to U m inverse transpose L m and we can show that this is a diagonal matrix and that is called the A conjugacy of the auxiliary vectors. And this is however, this A conjugacy arises only when a is a uh, a is a symmetric matrix a symmetric only for asymmetric matrices so with all its advantages conjugate gradient is only applicable for symmetric matrices and the computational steps are reduced using recursive relations for r and p for residual as well as for the auxiliary vector we can use the recursive relations so it is only applicable for symmetric a matrices and the question is that can there be similar methods for non symmetric matrices also. And for that we explore the other variants of Krylov subsystem method in which we can some way handle the asymmetric method. And one idea is that that if we have A in the space uh, we use the Krylov space of A for K m can you use the uh, Krylov space of A transpose as L m. So, that A plus A transpose is a symmetric matrix. So, that uh, the asymmetricity of A is some way taken care of by the asymmetricity of A transpose A plus A transpose is symmetric matrix. So, can we, can we pose it like a problem like this and we will we'll explore it. Langsos by orthogonalization exactly looks into the Krylov space to Krylov subspaces one Krylov subspace of one is of A another is of A transpose. So, uh, it builds a pair of bi orthogonal bases using the two Krylov subspaces K m A v 1 which is span of v 1 A v 1 A square v 1 A to the power m minus 1 v 1 and K m of A transpose w 1 which is span of w 1 A transpose w 1 A square w 1 to A, A, A transpose m minus 1 w 1. Now, if by Langsos bi orthogonalization method we get bases of k and k m a v 1 and k m a transpose v 1 Krylov subspace of a and a transpose and these bases are bi orthogonal to each other that, that is the sense that we take one basis of this v v i and we take one basis of this w w v i transpose w will be 0 if v i or w j v i transpose w j will be 0 if i is not equal to j. So, one v is conjugate to all other w's except that particular element of w all a vector of w all other w's. There is a bi conjugacy between v and w and there is an algorithm for that by which we can get it which is called Langsos bi orthogonalization algorithm. It initially starts with any gauge vectors v 1 and w 1 with their dot product being 1. So, they are orthonormal in that sense the dot product is normal and sets beta 1 is equal to delta 1 is equal to 0 and w 0 is equal to v 0 is equal to 0 and then uses 
something like a recursive relationship for v j plus 1 and w j plus 1 and gets uh, delta j plus 1 which is dot product between between v j plus 1 and w j plus 1 root of that and then divides uh, then beta j plus 1 which is this dot product divided by delta j plus 1 and divide w by that uh, beta and v by delta and if delta is equal to 0 this j plus this stops. So, if the dot product between v and w is 0 this algorithm stops. So, it starts with one take uh, uh, one particular v 1 w 1 and for next v is obtained as v is equal to a v minus alpha into v alpha is a v dot w minus beta into v j minus 1. So, from v the uh, a certain uh, amount of j minus 1 of v is v j is subtracted as well as alpha j v j is subtracted where v j alpha j comes by dot product of v j and w j and the similarly w j plus 1 comes. So, th through this method it is seen that uh, v j and w j are bi orthogonal to each other which is v j and w j are bi orthonormal basis of Krylov surface A and A transpose. So, v j transposed uh, v j dot w j 1 is, is equal to 1 and v j dot w v j dot w j is equal to 1, uh, but v j dot w i is 0 if i is not equal to j that is a property of bi orthogonality or we can write v i transpose w j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j is equal to 0 if i is not is equal to j and that is uh, ascertained by this particular algorithm. And the process breaks down once we get dot product between v and w for the particular j to be 0 that means, there is no further independent basis of the Krylov subspaces which can be generated all the independent independent basis vector all the independent vectors have been found out or we have been uh, we have calculated the entire basis of these two spaces A and A transpose uh, this to the Krylov spaces of A and A transpose. Langsos by orthogonalization is uh, fo follows this proposition if Langsos by uh, by orthogonalization algorithm for a non symmetric matrix A does not break down before the step M that that means, before the step M V M transpose V i transpose W i is non zero. Uh, then for vectors the vectors v i i is equal to 1 to m and w j j is equal to 1 to m form a bi orthonormal system that is v i transpose w j is equal to 1 if i is equal to j and otherwise it is 0. And this is ascertained by the way the Langsos algorithm has been devised. So, it is the algorithm is for finding out basis of a transpose v and a transpose w and uh, Krylov subspace between A transpose and W and A and V and the, these Krylov subspaces uh, are uh, can have any any basis any M basis, but the basis are vectors are found using Langsos uh, by orthogonalization algorithm in a way that V i transpose W j is equal to 1 or 0 if i is equal to j they are 1 otherwise they are 0 and V and W are by orthonormal basis of these two Krylov subspaces. This looks little abstract, but we will see that this is a great utility when you will try to define uh, derive an algorithm from here. Moreover, V i i is equal to 1 to m is a basis of k m a v plus 1 Krylov subspace of a and v 1 and w j j is equal to 1 to m is a basis of k m a transpose and w 1 and the following relations hold that a v m is equal to v m t m. Uh, delta m plus 1 delta v is defined through Langsos algorithm by orthogonalization algorithm v m plus 1 e m transpose e m is the first unique vector a transpose w m is w m t m transpose beta m w m plus 1 e m trans transpose t m is a tridiagonal matrix. So, its transpose is also a tridiagonal matrix with that now the t m is defined such that w m transpose a v m is equal to t m w m is the matrix containing as its columns all the vectors which are basis of uh, the Krylov subspace of A transpose all the W. Similarly, V m is the mat matrix which contains all the basis of Krylov subspace of A all the V's 
and WM transpose AVM is a tridiagonal matrix. And this is also this is also uh, 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 very evidently uh, uh, very easily ap uh, ap apparent because W and V are by orthogonal W M transpose uh, V M must be a W M transpose A V M must be a tridiagonal matrix. So, T m is a tridiagonal matrix. Two sided Lanczos algorithm is found is uh, devised for linear systems or for solving x is equal to b. Comp compute r naught b minus a x 0 and beta is equal to uh, uh, L 2 norm of r naught. Run m steps of non symmetric Lanczos algorithm start with v 1 is equal to r 0 by beta and any beta so that v 1 uh, dot w 1 is equal to 0. Generate Lanczos vectors using Lanczos algorithm v, v i and w i find the tridiagonal matrix T m and then compute y m is equal to T m inverse beta e 1. So, T m is the again the same as the Heisenberg matrix upper part of the Heisenberg matrix which is a tridiagonal matrix we found out in full orthogonal method. So, similarly you write T m is equal to w m transpose a v m and compute y m is equal to T m inverse beta e y 1 and x m is equal to x 0 plus v m y m. Now, if we can remember that H m the relationship for full orthogonal method was y m is equal to H m inverse beta e 1 and this and in uh, Lanczos say D Lanczos or Lanczos for linear systems we will say that y m is equal to T m inverse beta e 1 because h m and T m h m is T m in Lanczos method. The Heisenberg upper part of the Heisenberg matrix is same as uh, that as, as is a tridiagonal matrix here. How was full orthogonal method coming? It was appearing due to the fact that our uh, k m and l m are same. Here we are getting a different tridiagonal matrix but we are getting a similar relationship due to the fact and here T m was if we look into the conjugate gradient method T m was defined in a different way, but it was coming from the fact that uh, L k m the uh, Krylov subspace vectors or, or T m was defined in, in uh, F o m or in uh, rather not I will write Lanczos, the uh, Lanczos for symmetric matrix T m was defined as V m transpose A V m. And this is because V m was orthogonal to the residue of vectors, V m is where the x is updated, V m is also the subspace, uh, uh, V m is also the basis of the L m, V m is also orthogonal to the residual vector. Here instead we get a W m transpose. So, W m transpose must be orthogonal to the residual vector here or what we can say or W m must be orthogonal to residue vector here or what we should see is say is that that the Krylov subspace of A m transpose R 0 will be the L m for Lanczos by orthogonalization methods or or a variant of that. We will uh, look it into uh, little more elaborate way that um, recall by conjugate gradient algorithm for non symmetric matrices. Let us recall the derivation of conjugate gradient algorithm for Lanczos, al uh, Lanczos method. If it decompose the tridiagonal matrix into upper and lower triangular matrices, then defines an auxiliary vector P. So, tridiagonal matrix is decomposed in L m u m then a auxiliary vector P is defined and a re recursive relation is established for the residue vector R j plus 1. This is based on the direct solution of um, tridiagonal matrix system y m is equal to T m inverse beta e 1 using something like a T d m a type of algorithm which is a direct algorithm. This is further used a conjugacy of orthogonal or auxiliary vector P transpose a p is equal to uh, an identity vector if i is not is equal to j, j p i transpose a p j is equal to 0. In similar way we will try to now we will now try to develop a biconjugate gradient algorithm 
from Lanczos by orthogonal relation. The idea is that y m is calculated in similar way and there is an a conjugacy, uh, there is a conjugacy, he, here there were conjugacy between the uh, basis vectors of v, v i e transpose v j is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j. Here there is a conjugacy between w and v, we will utilize these facts. The biconjugate radiant algorithm is a projection process onto the Krylov subspace K m, which is a span of v1, a v1, a square v1, a to the power m minus 1, v1, and it starts with v1 is the initial residual vector b minus r x 0 uh, unit vector on that. Orthogonal to the knee, the residue vector must be orthogonal to L m, which is span of w1, a transpose w1, a transpose square w1 a transpose m minus 1 w 1. So, now L m is span of Krylov subspace of a transpose and that is a way we are taking any general matrix which is non-symmetric matrix and trying to build an algorithm which was earlier built for a symmetric matrix. For conjugate gradient L m was Krylov subspace of a only, but for biconjugate gradient we will see for non-symmetric matrix a similar algorithm will come keeping in mind that L m is now not the Krylov subspace of A m, A rather it is the Krylov subspace of A transpose. So, we will start with as usual V is equal to R 0 by mod R 0 and that is the unit vector along the first residue uh, vector, uh, direction and take a W such that V 1 transpose W 1 is non-zero as they are orthonormal we usually take W is equal to V. The method is equivalent to solving a dual system A transpose x star is equal to B star along with x is equal to B. And to solve with A, a transpose in that case W 1 is obtained by scaling the initial residual B star minus A transpose x 0 star. Instead of if we actually have to solve the dual system we are not solving the dual system, but in the back of the uh, processes this dual system is also being solved. Trilab subspace of A is uh, my k m space here, Krylov subspace of A transpose is the L m here. If we take another equation A transpose x is equal to some b star, A transpose x star is equal to b star, the L m and k m is just reversed. So, if I can solve one equation it is identical of solving the other equation also, which is equation for the transpose of A matrix. If we as we can solve that both the equations together, but you be, but as the given problem is a x is equal to b for us, we do not solve the transpose equation, which is type of solved in the back of the algorithm. But if we actually have to solve the transpose equation also, you have to solve a dual problem a x is equal to b and a transpose x is equal to b star, a transpose x star is equal to b star. We have to start with w is equal to b star minus a transpose a x 0. However, as we are not solving here, it is well we can take any w 1 to start with usually it is chosen as v 1. However, the dual system is not solved explicitly. So, for the derivation we start with the LU decomposition of the tridiagonal matrix into lower triangular and upper triangular matrix T m is equal to L m U m. We define our auxiliary matrix P m as P m is equal to V m U m inverse it is very same as it we have de, uh, defined it in the um, uh, conjugate gradient case. The solution is expressed as x m is equal to x 0 plus v m t m inverse beta e 1. Now, t m inverse is u m inverse l m inverse and v m u m inverse is p m. So, x 0 plus p m l m inverse beta e 1. So, this is inversion of a lower triangular matrix multiplied by a uh, uh, an auxiliary vector, vector matrix P. X m is equal to x 0 plus P m L m inverse beta e 1, which is the, this one. This update is very similar as conjugate gradient update. Like conjugate gradient algorithm, the vector r j and r j star are in same direction of v j minus 1 plus 1 and w j plus 1, right? because the residue vector is orthogonal to w and what is orthogonal to w is v. So, residue vector is along v j plus 1, r j is orthogonal to w j plus 1, so it should be along v j plus 1, r j star similarly will be along w j plus 1. So, as v j v i and w i are biorthogonal for i is less than m, hence r j and r j star 
could also form a biorthogonal system. Similarly, we can define a matrix P star which is W m U m inverse. P was defined as P m was defined as V m U m inverse. So, the star matrix that is the matrix for the trans, uh, transpose uh, equation part P m star is W m U m inverse. And very interestingly we can show that P m star A P m is L m inverse W m A V m U m inverse and W m A V m W m A V m this is nothing but the tridiagonal matrix T m. So, L m inverse T m U m inverse uh, inverse of a lower triangular matrix with a tridiagonal matrix and L inverse of the upper triangular matrix. And now we can we, al we have also seen that T m is equal to L m U m T m is decomposed as L m U m. So, you multiply this we will get the identity matrix. So, P m star and P m the auxiliary vector matrix for a and for A transpose are A conjugate. Earlier for conjugate gradient we have seen that P m is itself A conjugate, but here we are getting P m star and P m they are A conjugate. So, we got bi conjugacy A rather A bi conjugacy, bi conjugacy of R j and R j star residue vectors and we got bi A conjugacy of auxiliary vectors. Now, the problem is exactly same as conjugate gradient method. We can use similar type of iterate, uh, recursive relations and form the algorithm. So, auxiliary vectors are biorthogonal as CG like algorithm hence can be designed and we get the biconjugate algorithm, biconjugate gradient algorithm. The initial residual vector R 0 is equal to B minus X 0, you choose R 0 star such that the dot product for the initial vector R 0 and R 0 star is non zero. Then P 0 is equal to R 0, P 0 star uh, is equal to R 0. So, R 0 and R 0 star are non zero dot product, but R 0 and R 1 star will be 0 that that is the idea of biconjugacy. Uh, so, j is equal to 0 to convergence find alpha j which is R j transpose R j star by A p transpose p star. So, these are by orthogonal and these are by conjugate. Update x j plus 1 as x j plus alpha j plus j, r j plus 1 as r j minus alpha j a p j, r j plus 1 star is equal to r j star minus alpha j a transpose p j star, get beta i, beta j and get p j plus 1 using beta j and p j star plus 1, p star j plus 1 using beta j and r j plus 1. So, similar recursive relations as conjugate gradient, but now it is for both r star and r p and p star, but for a x we are only finding out x j plus 1 because we are not interested in finding the solution of the transpose equation you are not finding out x star j plus 1 and after certain iterations it should converge and we get the converse solution. The algorithm works for any non singular matrix A and the uh, convergence etcetera can be shown as same as the conjugate gradient type of algorithm which that means these are first converging algorithms. If the dual system A transpose is being solved then in the line 1 R 0 star should be defined as R 0 star is equal to B star minus A transpose X star and then X j star plus X j plus 1 star has to be updated from X j star for dual approximate solution after the line 5. Uh, the vectors produced by this algorithm satisfy but phi orthogonality properties like R j star R, R j dot R i star is equal to 0 if i is not is equal to 0, A p j dot p, uh, p i star is equal to 0 if i is not equal to 0. Th these are the base of uh, those are the proposition based on which we have this method is developed actually. The recursive relations come uh, 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 and then using this we can update the vectors, these vectors the updated vectors also must satisfy this particular properties. Now, there is a particular issue with biconjugate gradient algorithm which we will discuss before we finish this lecture and we will look into how so to solve this issue in the subsequent lectures. That is if we look into the by CG algorithm, 
that there are three matrix vector multiplication if the first one is before the uh, initial step, but during the iterations also there are two matrix vector multiplication a x 0 is the first one a p j is one multiplication and then a p j is again used another matrix vector multiplication. On top of that there is one more matrix vector multiplication with a transpose p j and a transpose multiplications are uh, difficult in terms of communicating with the uh, memory and the processor. So, uh, uh, number of at least a transpose p j a p j 3 matrix vector multiplication then p j has to be multiplied with p star. The number of calculations operational steps are usually more and multi uh, multiplication with the auxiliary vector and a is also uh, more and we have to also multiply with the transpose vector. And for that the uh, as the number of operational steps are more the num in during each iteration the number of uh, the amount of round of error is also more and due to this round of error in the convergence of this uh, by CG uh, uh, or by conjugate gradient method we see the, there are irregularity it does not converge uh, in a smooth way or monotonically there are fluctuations during convergence and sometimes these fluctuations can be large enough so that the convergence is disturbed for certain case of the problems the, the, the for small perturbations we can see lot of change in the result due to this uh, round of error related fluctuations. So, you have to uh, look into more stabilized versions of by CG method where this many matrix vector multiplications can be avoided and by CG stabilized method is one of that method which we will discuss now in, in the subsequent classes and uh, there are few other methods using some polynomial formulation of the auxiliary vector and residual vector polynomial expansion, expansion type of formulation of the auxiliary vector we can minimize the matrix vector products and can get good recursive relations uh, and much simple operations uh, for uh, in during each iteration and better algorithms can be devised in, in the next, next classes we will look into the much developed algorithms keeping in mind that by CG is the basic algorithm for um, uh, uh, for any non symmetric matrix which will be now developed using certain polynomial expansions to by CG stabilized type of algorithms we will look into it in the next class. Thank you.